Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on construct string from binary tree. And this is another uh, easy problem that they're giving us. So I'd say this one's definitely a little bit harder than the previous ones. It's somewhat closer to a medium. There are a lot of tricky things in here. So in this problem, you're given the root of a binary tree, construct a string consisting of parentheses and integers with the pre-word traversal and return it, and omit all the parentheses pairs that do not affect the one-to-one -one mapping relationship between in the original binary tree. So in this first example, they had an example here. And they also have a second example. So essentially, let's walk through kind of how we would build this for our pre-order traversal, and then we can get some intuition here. So you basically start the first node, and in your string, let's just have our like string, we put in the first node. Then for a pre-order traversal, remember it is root, if I can write this down. So it's root left right so we checked our root now we need to go left now over here now the other thing notice that um, because two is a left child of one we have an open parenthesis symbolizing that like two is a left child of one so whenever we have a node and a left child we'll have it in parentheses so we'll put in a two here now for two we will go left and because four is a left child of two we will put that in parentheses now four doesn't have any children so we don't need to have like open and closed parentheses because we just know that if it doesn't have any children, it's the same thing as not having any parentheses, right? Because if four has nothing after it, that means we know it doesn't have any children. So for four, we're done. Then we go back up to the two, right? So for four, we're done. So we can close this up. Now for the right child, we don't need an extra set of parentheses here because this is redundant, right? So if you have like two, four, that means that four is the left child of two. And I'm gonna show like how this works the other way. So we don't need this extra set of parentheses. So if we have a left child and no right child, we don't, we don't need it. So then we return back up to one and this needs to close. Then we go to the right side for one. So now this whole like left section for one is done. Then for the, because we go to the right side of one, we have another open parentheses, we put the three in there. And three has no left or right, so we don't need any any parentheses. So we just close that up. And this is what we should return. So let's go to example two, and, and this will give us a lot more intuition on like what we can omit and stuff. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put in a one, then we go left. So remember, if we go left, we need to put the two in parentheses. Then here, now we actually need a parentheses because we need to be we need to be able to distinguish this from this. Right. So if two has a left child of four, we will just write two, four. It'll be like this. But because two has no left child and a, right, and a right child, we can't write two, four as well. So we can write this down as well. If we have no children, don't need parens. Right. Like if we just have like a four or nothing, we don't need anything. Then if we have a left and right child need both parens. And we'll, we'll have a few examples here. So like in here, if we have one, two, three, then we're gonna have to have it like, so we'll, we'll write the examples over here. So if we have no children, like if we just have a node four, we don't need any parens at all. Now, if we have a left and right child, if we have like four with, or let's say one with children with two and three, then it'll be like one, two will be in parens, and three will be in parens. And the main thing is we need to be able to distinguish the left and if we only have one child. So we can need to write this down. So if we have only one child and it's left, then need one set of parens. So let's actually move this over here. But if it's right, need two sets. So we need to be able to differentiate between this and this, right? Like if the child is left or right. So if our child is the left child, like if four is on the left, we can write two, four. But if our child is on the right, then we will write two and then parens to symbolize there's an empty left child and then four. And that's really kind of honestly the only trick to this problem is if there is no left child and a right child, you need this thing right over here. So now let's uh, let's keep going. Well, let's actually go back and redo this example, right? 
So for one, we just have a one over here. Then when we go into the two, um, this is a left child. So for two, there is no left child and there is a right child. So we have to symbolize this case here. So we're gonna say no left child and a right child four. Now remember any node that has no children, we don't need any parens at all, right? So we can just write like four. And then we recurse back up to the two. So this will recurse back up. So this is like no left child and we have a left and we have a right child. Then we recurse back up to the one. So this is the end of the left child. Then we go to the right child. So the right child is just gonna be in here and there's nothing in here. And that's why it's like this. So this is essentially the only tricky part is we just need to have our cases where we, we need to code it up in a way so we can do like a pure traversal and we need to code it up in a way where we check for these things. Also, the other thing is notice how like you have like in our string, in this whole string, we have like the the, the root and then we have like an open paren for the left child and then we have a bunch of recursion and then we have a closed paren and so on. And so ideally you don't wanna just be like building on a string because let's say you're building on a string, right? Like what would happen? Like four would return four up to two and then that two would make some kind of string and add four and then that would add another item and another item and another item, right? So because this can get really long, I think the constraints here is like a thousand nodes. You don't wanna have like a times a thousand and then you add a B because it reconstructs the string. So instead of that, we're actually just gonna make a result array. So we'll have a result array. And then we can walk through this one more time and show how we would put this on our result array. So here, here we go. We're gonna have our result array. So we're gonna start at the one. So for the one, we're just gonna say, okay, whatever the node value is, let's throw that into the result array. So we're gonna throw that in. Then we're gonna check, is there a left child? There is a left child. So we will put that open parenthesis as a character because it's the start of the left child. Then we recurse the two and we're gonna put in the node value, so two. Then we're gonna check, is there a left child? There is no left child. Now, is there a right child? Yes, there is. So if there's no left and a right, we need to put in these uh, open and close parenthesis, right? So we're gonna put in open and close parenthesis. And then we're gonna recurse down to four and we will, uh, so before we recurse down to four, we need to put an open parenthesis for the right child, right? So we'll put in an open and close for the left child. Then for the right, we'll put in an open parenthesis. And then for the four, we'll put in the nodes value. Then there is no left or right, so we don't need any kind of parentheses. Then we'll recurse back up to two. So now we are done with this four, so we need to have the close parenthesis for the four. Then we are done with the two, so we need the close parenthesis for the two to go up to the one, right? To be the matching one for here. So we have a close here. Then we do the right child for one. So we're gonna put in a open parenthesis for the right child, recurse to three, put in the three value, then recurse back up to the one and put in the close parenthesis here. So now if we combine this entire string, let's see what we get. We get one, open parenthesis two, like this, four, close. Okay, and that should be correct, yeah. So that's kind of how we're gonna do. We're just gonna have a traversal with a bunch of if statements. And then those if statements will tell us like what we need to add. And then at the end, finally, when we traverse all the way, we will just have this result array and we can just join it up. So that way we're only adding one element at a time and our string additions are efficient instead of adding one element to a string of like a thousand elements because strings are immutable in Python, so you have to rebuild it. If you're using language with strings that are mutable, you can just add the letter. But in most languages, they are not mutable. So you want to use an array instead and just do this efficient building. So let's code that up. So we're going to have this result. And we're gonna have a traverse function. And we're gonna add the value, but we wanna add the value as a string because we can't join integers. So we're gonna take the value, convert it to a string and add it. Now we wanna check if there's a right node before even checking the left node, right? Because if there is a right node, then if there is a left node or there is no left node, it doesn't matter. We're gonna have this like open close parenthesis thing. Like if there, if like if we have a node and there is no left node, let's say it'll look like this and then the right node. And if there is a left node, it'll have some values like this, but either way, these left parentheses will exist. So that's why we wanna check with the right node first. So we'll say if node.right, we can append the open parentheses for the left node. Then we can check if there is a left node. So if node.left, let's recurse. I, otherwise, either way, we need to have this close parenthesis for the uh, left node, because even if it's not there, we still need to have the two parentheses symbolizing that our node is the right node, not the left. So we will append uh, 
the close parenthesis for the left node. So we need to append the close parenthesis for the left node and the open parenthesis for the right node. And because we're joining this up, we can just do this in one operation. So we can just append something like this. So this is the close parenthesis for the left node, open parenthesis for the right node. Whoops, wrong way. You can also write this in two different lines. You can append this one, then you can append this one, but we're just gonna do it this way. Now we want to recurse write. Then finally, we wanna have the close parenthesis for the right node. Okay, otherwise, we just need to check if we have a left node, right? So if we have a right node, we can do all this, but if we have a left node and no right node, then we can just do the left node recursion and then that's it. And then if it's not any of these two, then we don't need to add any parentheses because the node has no children. So that the reason we need to check for the left node as well, because what if it has a left node and no right node, this is not gonna work. So you're gonna need to check here. There's probably like a better way of doing this, but this also works. So if we have a left node, then we need to have, we basically just need to copy uh, this line of code and this line of code and a close parenthesis. Uh, open, close, there we go. So now we know it doesn't have a right node because we checked that up here. So if it has a left node, we'll just append left, traverse. And otherwise we don't have to append any parentheses and we just return. And so that should be basically it here. And now we just have to call this traverse function. So we can call traverse on the root. And so remember our result array is just gonna be uh, an array of numbers and parentheses. And it's fine to have like multiple of these in one in one uh, element in the array because we're just gonna join it all together anyway. So we just return this whole array joined up. And this is like a, if, you, if you're kind of new to lead code doing easy problems, this is, a good, this is a good time to mention it. You definitely want to be building most of your uh, strings like this where you want to build it up as an array. And then when you are ready to actually return the entire string, then you can just join the whole thing. That makes it a lot more efficient. Then you have O of one uh, operations to add characters to, to your string. Otherwise, like I said, if you had like a thousand A's and you want to add an A to a string, it would have to remake the whole string, which would take a thousand operations. So this is way more efficient and the way you should be doing it. So now we should just return. Let's take a look. And there we go. And this is all as usual all over the place. So um, these like super easy uh, problems or not super easy, but just like super fast problems, the, the uh, what's it called? Constraints are all over the place. So if you, if you submit a bunch of times, you'll be like the 90th percentile, 30th percentile. I wouldn't worry about any of that. Um, so we can talk about the time and space. So this is gonna be an O of N, like a normal traversal where we just have these operations where these are all, like this this whole thing is actually O of one because we have like, let's say five appends per thing. So that's just constant, constant time. So this is just a basic traverse function because we are appending one thing at a time. So we're doing it efficiently. Um, and space, as always, it's O of N because the recursive uh, stack depth for a binary tree. So if our tree was completely unbalanced, we would recurse down to every single node, right? Like if every node only had a right child or something that it would traverse down and levels. And curious, let's see what the best solutions have you always. Now we can do that. Tree to string. Oh, okay, I see. It's not root. Yeah, so the funny thing is, is I think this is actually worse because you are appending two strings instead of building up this array. But like I said, the leak code stuff isn't super consistent. So a lot of times you'll get a solution that in theory should be slower, but in practice is all over the place. So kind of funny to see that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this is helpful. Uh, definitely not super easy problem, but once you realize that what you have to check for, not too bad either. So if you like this video, uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.